In this video, we're gonna show you how to clean your carburetor and get your bike running right. First things first, you're gonna to wanna to prepare your workspace. I like to use these blue paper towels. They're thick and it just keeps everything nice and clean and organized looking. I also use a bucket on the top of my workbench to get into this step, which is pre-cleaning the carburetor. I use liberal amounts of carb spray, just get after it, get rid of all the dirt and gunk on the outside. This carburetor here, obviously this hasn't been done in a while. I even use kind of a pick or a screwdriver or something just to knock loose some of these more solid sections. Disassembling the carburetor. This can be the really frustrating part if you don't have a solution. So as you can see, that bolt did not want to come undone. So what I'll use is a needle nose, a locking needle nose, go ahead and place it on the bolt. And then with the aid of the screwdriver, I can just initially get that turn going and then obviously finish taking out the bolt with the screwdriver. Do not struggle on these. Work smart, not hard. These bolts on the carburetor, they're soft, they're easily strippable. So go ahead and use this method or something like it to avoid stripping out these bolts. And I'll continue to take out the throttle slide here. You can see this has a lot of gunk on it, so this definitely needed some service. And then same thing down here with the float bowl. I always go ahead and try it first. This one came, didn't need the needle nose, but the next few will. By the way, you can win this 2007 YZ125 totally rebuilt. Head over to patreon.com backslash the MX factory. Link is in the description below. And continuing with the last bolt on the float, I'm gonna go ahead and use the needle nose and screwdriver trick here again, saving my life. Best thing about these blue paper towels is that when your surface gets dirty, boom, brand new work surface. Keep everything nice and clean and tidy, especially before you get the internals of this carb apart. It'll just make your life that much easier. Always a good idea to take a picture of where these vent hoses go with your phone or whatever, but they are pretty self-explanatory where they need to go back to. Now time to remove the float. There's one screw here. Remove the float and remove the float needle, which you'll see that I just removed there. You go ahead and pop off the main jet and remove this holder and then I'll go ahead and remove the pilot jet. Spray, air, repeat. Now it's time to clean all the little pieces that you just took out of your carb. The straw on your carb can really helps direct that spray into all these little orifices, these little holes inside your jets and just basically spraying down anything that just came out of your carb. Compressed air is going to be your final cleansing. If you don't have access to a compressor, I suggest you borrow your buddies or figure out a way to get it. This is the step that really gives you confidence that you're getting all debris and excess cleaner out of these little holes. I even hold it up very close to the jet and make sure that I can literally feel the air coming out the opposite side of my jet. Back to the float bowl, using liberal amounts of cleaner, I'll wipe it down, I'll spray some more, just really taking my time and being thorough, and then I'll finish it off with some compressed air, making sure that I really get it inside any individual little hole in there. Pop off the fuel line here quick. Now it's time for the main carb body. Go ahead and just spray away. I'm talking party time with the carb cleaner. Wipe it down, spray some more. This is really your time to take your time and be very thorough and get this carb body nice and clean. Make sure you're coming at it from all directions, top, bottom, really spraying into any of those holes where all the jets are. And now taking your compressed air and especially making sure that you can clean out any little passageway in this carb. This is obviously something that you don't do every single time you ride. So really take your time and make sure that you're getting this done right. As you lay down your carb onto a nice clean surface, now I'm just taking time to just wipe off the vent hoses. Not completely necessary. I'm also gonna hit a little compressed air inside the hoses, make sure their passageways are nice and freed up. Now it's time to assemble everything back together. Start with the jets. I'm gonna put the pilot jet in here. Don't over tighten the jet. It just needs to be snug up. You don't want it to obviously come loose, but you also don't need to go all Hulk on it. I use my eight millimeter T handle just to tighten up the main jet a bit. If you're using a socket or something, just watch out. There can be a little gunk inside that socket. Now time to put the float in. Make sure your float needle moves freely before you tighten everything up. Go 
ahead and put the float bowl back on. There's only one way this goes in, so take your time. It should just snug up nice and easy. And then place the vent hoses back onto the main car body. And make sure you use your little hose guides right there. Make sure those are thread onto the hose so you can put those back when you're screwing your foot body in. I do apply a little bit of grease to the bolts just on the outside of the carburetor. It's a very small amount and it really helps them from seizing up and allows me to get in the carb a little bit easier that next time. I've never had a bolt fall out as long as you're tightening them with the right amount of pressure, which is just snug. And get all the bolts placed where they should need to be just barely tightened and then you can go back around them and do a final tightening after. the fuel line back onto the carb. Make sure you get that clip over the fitting. Now I'm gonna clean up the slide. I'm not changing the needle position or anything at this time. So I'm just kind of keeping the slide together, just making life easy, cleaning it, using some air, using some carb clean, wiping it down, and it'll be good to go. Take your time when you're putting this in here. If this isn't just following nice and easy in there, that means that your needle is not going through the main jet hole. So take your time there. wraps up episode two of our Yamaha YZ125 rebuild. We are super excited to give this bike away. Head over to patreon.com backslash the MX factory. We have more videos on the side of your screen. If you liked it, give us a like, subscribe. See you next time.